Is dementia purely genetic or is it caused by environmental factors or any other things that people consume? Great question. Um, so though dementia, though Alzheimer's disease was coined in 1906 by a physician named Alois Alzheimer, the brain has long been thought of to sit in sort of the ivory tower of the brain, guarded from what happens down below by what's called the blood-brain barrier. But we now know that the brain is influenced by everything that happens down below. And the, the dogma, especially with regard to Alzheimer's disease fundraising over the past couple of decades, has really been that this is, the, this is a condition that you can't treat, prevent, or slow. But we now have really solid data to say that we actually, that it is a, it is a potentially preventable condition. So when it comes to uh, our risk for developing Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia, there are basically two categories of risk. You have your non-modifiable risk factors, of which there are three. So you've got your age, your genes, and your gender. So your age, age is still the number one risk factor for developing Alzheimer's disease, right? You can't change your age yet. You, um, you have your gender. If you're a woman, your risk is double that as compared to a male's. And you have your genes. Now, genes is something that we can actually talk about because though you can't change your genes, making them, therefore, a non-modifiable risk factor, you can change the expression of your genes, how your genes express themselves moment to moment. So, for example, if you live in the United States and you carry a copy or two of what's called the APOE4 allele, so it's basically a polymorph polymorphism, meaning it's not a mutation, it's actually a very common gene variant. About one in four people carry the APOE4 allele. In the United States, that increases your risk anywhere between two and four, 14 fold, depending on whether you carry one or two copies. I think that's also the same genetic expression that makes you have CTE. CTE, yeah. It, yeah. it, 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 it makes everything more, it makes your brain more vulnerable in general to insult, whether that is from TBI, uh, exposure to pollutants, exposure to unhealthy ways of eating. Do we know why it does that? Well, it's interesting, yeah. So the APOE4 allele is thought to be the ancestral version. So it's the first version. All, all non-human primates are APOE4-4. So they carry the APOE4 allele, not just one copy, but two copies, and yet they don't develop Alzheimer's disease. When you look to people, we've evolved uh, these different isoforms of um, the APOE gene. So we have APOE 2, 3, and 4. And just to reiterate, APOE 4 is the ancestral allele. So cultures that have um, longer exposure to modern agriculture, actually there's lower frequency of the APOE 4 allele. The thinking is that that agriculture, right, like when we became domesticated, when we started basing our diets around grains, when we became more sedentary, less... Uh, generalized in terms of our um, cognitive, the, the, the daily cognitive tasks that our ancestors would have undertaken, that it's selected against the APOE4 allele. So it's possible that that allele, which again is very common, one in four people carry it, carry it is sort of the canary in the coal mine for the, for the Western way of life. That if you adopt a Western way of life and you eat, you know, today, 60% of calories that adults consume come from ultra-processed junk foods, right? We're more sedentary than ever before in human history. We've got more stress. We're exposed to more environmental pollutants. That that is what dramatically is what pulls the trigger, right? Because genes load the gun. It's our diets and our lifestyles that pull the trigger. But if you were to take somebody with that same genotype, right, and move them to a less, industrial, a less industrialized part of the world, like, say, Ibadan, Nigeria, where the frequency of the APOE4 allele is just as common, it has, no it has little to no association with Alzheimer's disease. So just to put that another way, what that suggests is if you're genetically at risk for developing Alzheimer's disease in the United States, you might simply move to Ibadan, Nigeria, or another less industrialized part of the world and see that risk abolished. So with this consumption of uh, processed foods that is responsible for a large percentage of the calories that people consume today, is the human body adapting to that? Is that why this APOE4 is less prevalent than it is in other cultures? You know, it's possible, although with, with age being the primary risk factor, it's unlikely that um, that, that has put significant selection pressure. Um, so I'm not, I'm, not actually, I'm not sure, but we do know, 
you know, there are, I think, gene studies where they've looked at um, expression of uh, genes that produce enzymes that break down amylase, right, like starch and things like that. And those are increasing, I think, over time. It's a little little out of my wheelhouse. But, um, but generally, I mean, yeah, the standard American diet is completely aberrant from the diet, you know, that our ancestors consumed, the diet that, that really we attribute to the development of the human brain. 60% of the calories that we consume today come from ultra-processed, packaged convenience, convenience foods. Um, it's a massive problem. I mean, it's driving obesity. It's driving type 2 diabetes. If you have type 2 diabetes, so going back to Alzheimer's disease and, and this, this gene expression, so the APOE4 allele is, you know, you have it, but it's not necessarily destiny. And 90% of Alzheimer's cases, I'm sorry, more, nine, like 99% of Alzheimer's cases are attributable to some interplay between our genes and our environment. There's a very small proportion of patients with Alzheimer's disease that have a gene mutation that is a deterministic gene. Um, and this is called the early onset familial Alzheimer's gene. And that gene basically guarantees that you're going to have Alzheimer's disease. But that makes up only 1% to 2% of cases. The vast majority of people who develop Alzheimer's disease, um, it's the interplay between their genes and their, and their environment.